Hey guys, and welcome to what will hopefully be my final Errol tutorial on the channel. Now, I know I've talked a lot about Errol in previous videos, but I was actually talking this topic over with some of my Patreon subs a few days back, and it made me realize there are some things I haven't yet explained when it comes to Errol that I definitely want to go over here. Now, when I was talking with my Patreon subs, they were telling me that the problem with a lot of these Errol guides on YouTube is YouTubers kind of like to dance around the mechanic, right? Instead of actually explaining it, they'll say something like, Errol is hard, and if you want to learn it, you can go in this free play map and fly around and figure it out yourself. But as you probably know, that doesn't really help. So instead, what I'm going to do here is say, yes, Errol is hard to learn, but there are some shortcuts I can share to help you learn it faster. Before I get into this though, I do wanna quickly say, since so many of you clicking on these videos are new to the channel, then if you do end up finding this video helpful and you are a new viewer, it'd really mean a lot to me if you join the small group of people subbed to the channel. Now, it's totally up to you and you can always unsub whenever you want, but subbing is really the best way to support me in making this content, so I'd really appreciate it if you were able to subscribe. Anyways, with all the intro stuff out of the way, let's talk about the fastest way to learn Errol in Rocket League. Okay guys, like I said, I'm going to do my best to trim the fat with this video and just deliver exactly what you need to know to learn Errol and aerial car control step by step. Now I will quickly say that when it comes to Errol, there is a step zero, and that is getting your keybinds and settings in check. Now, the reason I say this is because the adjustments I'm going to get into in a second here are going to require either an arrow left or arrow right keybind. So make sure you're comfortable with that before you move on to anything later in the video. Since I did spend a lot of time talking about this though in previous videos, I'm not going to repeat myself here. Instead, I'll just link you those videos if you haven't seen them already. But really, if you haven't yet picked a set of keybinds or learned how to tornado spin, for example, then definitely start with those videos before you come back here and jump into step one. Okay, moving on. Step one when it comes to learning Errol is going to be learning the individual adjustments. See, the thing about Errol is it's not like other mechanics, like wave dashes or half flips, right? You can't just learn what buttons to press and be done with learning Errol. The fact is, the mechanic itself of Errolling isn't that hard to do, right? Pressing the Errol button is easy. The hard part is more in controlling Errol, especially when your car is facing weird directions with air, because that's when things get complicated. So what we're going to do here is try to figure out how to move our car in certain positions and sort of work our way up to continuous air roll from there. All right, with having talked a lot about this mechanic before, I found the fastest way to teach this is to just tell you how to move left or right in the air. If you're somebody who really wants a complete explanation, definitely check out my first air roll video, but otherwise the adjustments to go left and right are as follows. Okay, to turn left with air roll left, what you're going to want to do is two things. One, push down and to the right on your joystick, and two, hold arrow left for the duration of one spin. Now, like I said, I'm not going to dig into the weeds with exactly why this works, because all you really need to know is pushing down and to the right on your joystick while holding arrow left is going to angle the nose of your car to the left and allow you to move in that direction. But even though I've kind of given you the shortcut to turning left, one thing you definitely can't forget is where the adjustment starts. For the purposes of this video, we're going to say the adjustment starts in what I call the neutral position, where you just took off, for example, you can see the hood of your car, and most importantly, your wheels are facing away from you. But why am I stressing this so much anyways? Well, the reason I'm stressing this so much is actually because not paying enough attention to where this adjustment starts is the most common mistake I see when I'm coaching players or just watching other people's gameplay. Remember, the thing about air roll is it's not like a half flip. It's not just like one set of inputs does one thing. No, pushing down and to the right on your joystick while holding air roll left will do different things based on where your car is facing. And I know I just said these inputs will turn you left if you start in the neutral position, but let's say instead you try doing the same adjustment when your car is upside down. In that case, your car is actually going to go the opposite direction over to the right. And that's because you started it backwards. 
bottom line is, when you're starting out, don't forget about initiating the adjustment from this neutral position, otherwise things are going to get messy. All right, just knowing this alone, you could theoretically turn any way you want in the air, so long as you start the adjustment at the right point. In practice though, just knowing this single adjustment isn't really the complete method to learning air roll, because having to wait until your car is facing backwards or forwards to be able to turn whichever direction you want is clearly not very efficient. After all, the whole reason we're learning air roll is to eventually have complete control of our car in the air. So for the next step, we're going to have to talk about how to turn right starting in the neutral position. Okay, moving on to step two with adjusting using air roll left, and this is where things kind of get tricky for some people. Now, I'll just tell you right now, it turns out that to go right, we're not going to push down into the left or even up into the left like a lot of people would imagine on our joystick. Instead, to turn right, starting from the neutral position of course, you're going to want to push up and to the right on your joystick and then continue to air roll until you're back in the neutral position. Remember, the way we're doing this is identical to turning left, only difference being the direction we push our joystick. Now something I haven't yet given a lot of attention to, especially in my previous videos, is exactly how long you need to push down your joystick or hold down air roll to complete this single adjustment. So to better answer that question, what I found is that you wanna push down your joystick for about give or take half of the spin, and then continue air rolling normally until you completed one revolution of the air roll. This is where it gets interesting though, because if you only flick your joystick up and to the right, for example, for a very brief second, your car is going to turn a little to the right, but it won't necessarily correct back to that initial position because you haven't been holding the joystick down long enough. So if you do it this way, you'll stay tilted until you complete that second half of the adjustment and continue to push down your joystick. And this is actually the main thing I was talking about during the coaching session that inspired this video. So take a look at this clip here. I guess that's a nuance I don't really mention in my other videos, but for example, when you're going straight, after you do the adjustment, you want to correct your car back to the neutral position very quickly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. because if you don't correct your car back to the neutral position, you'll fly out in whatever direction you are headed. Whereas here, we're on a we're on a we're on a slope right now that's clearly going down and to the right throughout the duration. Mm -hmm. Which means do I want to get back to the neutral position? Not really. I don't want to get back to the neutral position until I hit that ramp down there. So watch how I fly here. I'm going to do an adjustment over to the right, but watch how I'm never really back to the neutral position here. I'm always flying further and further to the right. You see that? Now hopefully that clip wasn't too confusing. But the takeaway I'm really trying to get across here is that air roll isn't what controls the magnitude of the adjustment. Instead, it's your joystick movement and how long you hold that down that really dictates where your car goes. For example, in the video, you saw if I just did a brief flicking of my joystick, I would only turn my car a little bit, but it wouldn't return back to the neutral position. And that's actually a tool that you can use when you're flying, depending on the situation. Now, another key takeaway that I want to point out here is that to turn any direction, you really don't need to push your joystick anywhere other than opposite the direction of your air roll. If you really pay close attention to my joystick while I'm doing a rings map, for example, you'll see that it's almost always over to the right. Because as we learned, you can turn any way you want with just these two adjustments up and to the right or down and to the right when it comes to air roll left. From there, it's just a matter of choosing which direction to point your joystick based on where your car is facing and which way you want to go. But okay, hopefully you now know the fundamentals of air roll adjustments, right? How to turn left versus how to turn right. So if everything has made sense so far, we're going to move on to step three and talk about actually how to put this information to use in practice. Okay, moving on to step three, and now you should at least feel a little better of how to start practicing these adjustments. Before we move over to a rings map though, which is really where I like to explain this stuff, I highly recommend you mess around with what I've been talking about thus far over in free play, just to start to get a feel for this before we really dive into practicing. 
So once you spent a few minutes in free play and are ready to begin training in workshop maps, let me be clear and say what I don't want you doing is just diving in and holding down air roll continuously like I do. Mm. Remember, we're trying to build up your air roll ability, so we gotta take this step by step and start with the individual adjustments. That's why the first thing I recommend you practice is your individual turns. So to start, fly up to a ring in the neutral position and practice turning left or right using those adjustments we talked about earlier. The key here is to first get down that individual adjustment and then build up from that point. So start by taking things slow and just do a single adjustment per ring. Then once you're starting to feel comfortable with these single adjustments, try to hold air roll down for two consecutive spins rather than just one. If you can see where I'm going here, you're going to keep progressing this way until you can do three spins in a row, until you can do four spins in a row, and then eventually just be able to hold air roll down and adjust continuously. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is much easier said than done, and I can't really capture how difficult this is going to be for you over video, because trust me, this is going to take a long time to get down. But to hopefully help alleviate some of the struggle, I do want to share a few last tips to keep in mind while you're learning. Okay, starting with tip number one, the most important thing to keep in mind with air roll is where the adjustment starts. Remember, if you don't start the turn in the neutral position, things are going to get messy quickly. So until you have a complete understanding of how air roll works exactly, use the shortcuts and tricks I shared to help simplify the process for yourself. Tip number two is remember what we talked about when it comes to using your joystick, right? You only really ever need to push the joystick opposite the direction of your air roll, at least when you're starting out. Now I will say, the way I've been teaching this thus far is sort of a simplified version. So you can definitely make these adjustments work with different sets of inputs, but when you're beginning, try to do things the way I explained it just to make things a little easier on yourself. Bottom line is, if you sort of stick to the framework I've shared here, you're going to find that you learn this mechanic much quicker than if you just went into free play and tried to freestyle for yourself. All right, tip number three, my final tip is going to be remember what actually makes your car move, and that is boost. Now, up to this point, I've kind of neglected talking about boost, but I do want to make it clear that all the adjustments I've talked about thus far are only good for positioning your car, right? From there, you have to actually boost to send your car in whatever direction you want it to go. And unfortunately, when it comes to this boosting piece, I don't really have any shortcuts for you. You're just going to have to get a feel for how long you need to press down boost to go any one way. But I will say, just like with everything else I teach, I think it's better to start off with slight adjustments, so slight feathering of your boost, rather than just holding it down, because I think it's much easier to learn to control that way. Anyways guys, I do hope these few tips will at least offer you some sort of guidance while you're learning. But alright guys, that is about all for the actual content of how to learn arrow left. Now remember guys, learning this mechanic isn't going to be easy, and above all else, the most important thing I can advise is to have patience. So even if this does take a little bit of time to learn, know that if you practice it this way, if you take things step by step, you're going to be much better off in the long run than if you had it. All that being said, I definitely did avoid talking about a few topics in this video, so if you're still interested in learning more about this mechanic or you have any other questions, then I highly recommend you check out my other two videos on Errol because they go more into the details with different parts of this mechanic. Anyways though guys, I don't mean to be repetitive with these sort of videos, so I really do hope there is something unique in here that you found useful to help you improve in your games. Before the video ends though guys, I did want to let you all know about a few giveaways I'm going to have going on over the holiday season. Now as many of you know, at the end of every month, I draw a random winner to win a month's worth of free private coaching with me. But since the growth on the channel and the support has been incredible lately, I also wanted to do some giveaways to celebrate 50k subs and all the other milestones we hit, so I'll be doing other things like controller giveaways over the holiday season over on my Discord as well. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to join the Discord and enter because I pick all the giveaway winners over there. 
Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for this video. So if you did like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and all the other YouTube stuff. But as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, guys.